afternoon. Yeah, we'll get more information on Scott uh, with him going down. If I should get more information uh, this afternoon. How what I've seen from Juice is I've seen a, a guy who stepped in and, and done a really good job of handling handling a lot of uh, a lot of different positions, playing guard, playing center. See a guy who's able to handle multiple things, right? Operate efficiently inside. So pleased with where Juice is. Yeah, with training camp and the injuries, those things, they happen, right? No matter what camp you're at, that's, that's going to happen as part of training camp. Just hope guys can acclimate and we can just, you know, keep moving forward, next guy step up. Uh, but as we evaluate things uh, from a sports performance side, we're always trying to make sure our guys have the best things available to them when it comes to taking care of their bodies, when it comes to the recovery, regen days. We offer those guys everything they could possibly need, right, to make sure they're taking care of their bodies. When the team, everyone came up, when Scott went down, it just shows that our guys are connected. They truly care about one another. That's exactly what I'm trying to build here with our guys is, you know, genuinely caring for your teammate, and that's what you see there. Is that the type of leadership that you want to see from your quarterback? Oh, what I look for in leadership, I look for guys who are, are positive, and what they do, right? encouraging their teammates, but guys who are also, right, you're doing things the proper way where guys want to follow you, guys want to listen to you. That's what leadership is, and it's always about picking the next man up and understanding whatever happened, good or bad, on that play, it's all about that next play mentality, and that shows good leadership. When you have a, when you have a player that's um, out for a significant amount of time, whether it be because of injury or illness, and they return, what do you see as the biggest challenge in uh, – they face whenever they're coming back? Yeah, when players go out and they come back, I, I always say, you know, the biggest thing is the mental hurdle of getting back. You've gone through the process of getting your body back. You know physically I'm ready to go, but mentally it's a hurdle, and that's the one that people can't see. People don't understand. Like, when you go through these injuries, these guys are are very resilient in the things that they have to go through, the how tough it is on, on their bodies, and the things they push through. A lot of guys are out there practicing, and they are dealing with something. I'm pretty sure everybody's dealing with something, and I never take that for granted. That's what the game of football is. It's things you have to you have to be tough, right? You have to push through tough tough times. But mentally, it's that one hurdle that you always have to overcome whenever you're coming back from injury. Earlier this week, Bobby Sloan talked about a messy pocket for the quarterbacks, a big thing for him, and the offense from the defensive side of things. That messy pocket, how difficult is that for the quarterback to manage and how important is it for CJ to get some of those reps here in training? Defensively, we want to make it as hard as possible on the quarterbacks. We want to disrupt the quarterback's process as much as possible, and that that involves having a messy pocket, right? It involves the defensive line being aggressive in how they rush, rushing together. And when it comes to our offense, it's about them being under pressure, being under duress, and can you make – the proper decisions, whether it's to make a big play or whether it's to, hey, let's move on. They got us. Let's get out of the – get out. Of, let's not turn a bad play into a horrible play. Let's just get out of the play and play the next down. Scott, you touched down with uh, Nico Collins catching that ball over there. So what have you thought about that matchup? And then what would you consider Nico y'all top two right now? Uh, right now with the matchup of Stingley, all right, Mets, I mean, not Mets, uh, with Nico, and with, with all our receivers, what you see is is competition, right? Guys are challenging. Guys are pushing each other, and that's what you want to see. Nico has done a good job in camp. Uh, he's shown up down the field, shown up uh, playing with really great hands no matter when the ball is coming to him. So he's done a really good job for us. And when it comes to a, a one, two, or three, to me that doesn't matter because who knows who's going to be out there. It's just can you make a play? When is your opportunity to make a play? Coach, we'll take it there more. On the field, but off the field, as far as being in the classroom, how are they picking up everything that you all installed? And when it comes to the classroom and the installs and what we're asking of, we we put a lot on our guys. There's a lot of install over these first you know six, seven days of camp. 
there's been a heavy amount of install. And I now the time is to, everyone knows what to do. Everyone knows how to do it. And now is the time to go and compete, right? Now can you do it better than the man next to you, right? It's time to compete, go earn a job, go show that you want to be a part of the Houston Texans. Also, from his demeanor and the example he set in, what have you seen from John Mechie overall? John Mechie's demeanor, it hadn't changed. He's, a, he's, he's the same. He's consistent. He's positive. He's a hard worker. Uh, whenever he's out here in practice, he's giving everything he has. You'll see him after practice doing extra. He's trying to perfect his craft. So excited with his mentality and his worth ethic. Worth ethic. Uh, it's just it's cool to see. Arm competing. Like it seems like every practice, y'all put up some amount of time. All set to go. How much leeway do the quarterbacks have to um, dictate what they're doing to see how they differently lead in that situation? When we have our compete periods, it's, I want everyone off to the side and make it as, as real as it can get. Uh, and want to see the players make plays without the coaches standing behind, you know, telling them what to do. Can can the guys go out and just operate, you know, efficiently without? anyone else on the field because that's real football. So for me, I want to simulate as much game-like exposure as possible, and that's what we do in those situations. Coach, you the third day that Darvin Shaw's been out. What have you seen from that position group, and is there anybody that kind of fell under the radar, radar stood out these last few days? What I've seen from our tight end group, I've, I've seen a, a lot of guys who are, first and foremost, just well coached. I think Jake Moreland has done a, a really great job of coaching those guys, whoever has stepped in, guys know what to do, guys have performed well, guys are competing. Uh, really, you know, that group is, you know, we've seen a lot of different guys out there, but they're doing their jobs very well and I'm uh, pleased with where their group is. You got, you got time for two more. You all had a fairly deep cornerback class kind of coming in. Um, you all added Shaquille Griffin. What was the thought process in adding him and what has he added? Yeah, adding, adding Shaq to our group it was just a matter of, we wanted to add some more depth uh, to the cornerback position. You know, it, it's, it takes more than two, right? So we want to have and adding a guy like Shaq who has experience. He's been a starter in his league for a while. We know he's battling injury. He's coming back, and he's done a good job. Right? Shaq from OTAs, and now he's just progressively gotten better and better, been very consistent. So uh, excited to add him. When you add a veteran guy and you're expecting that depth, that leadership, he's been everything we could have asked for. How do you think the NFL's moved to? Where you been with Mechie? Um, you talked a little about him. What type of competition do you have for him for your receiver group this year? What, the competition for the receiver group? No, no, no. With Mechie, not even the back for the week. What have you seen and what are you expecting out of him this season? Oh, I mean, with Mechie and what I've seen, again, is just a guy who shows determination, shows grit. And every single day, that's what he does. He's working every day. Like, that's what you want to see. As I said earlier, he has tremendous work ethic, and he's working to get back. And when it comes time to the season, whenever that is, just on him to be his best. Whatever that is, whatever role that is for us on our team, hopefully he can help us to win games. We'll close with Brooks and Cole. Go ahead. What do you think the NFL's move was to move scheduled cuts in training camp? And how do you all approach that? Is it better to have more than front end, back end? How do you all manage that? Yeah, with, with the – the one big cut at the end of training camp, I think the, the thought process from the NFL is just to have more guys available for that last preseason game. Because what you see happen is you, you make cuts and you end up in that last game and a, a lot of guys are taxed because your starters are not playing that last preseason game. And you have a lot of guys who are playing offense, defense, and all the special teams. So making it one big cut allows you to have enough guys, right, a big enough roster. So you know, if you want to take care of the starters, you can during that particular time. But you're also you're not wearing out, you know, the, the younger guys there. Last one, Cole. Demico, when you look at last week, it seemed like CJ was waiting for a place to kind of like get it downfield. Today he had a couple of drills early. Have you noticed this progression in timing really step up a lot of offensive guard? CJ with the progression and timing, it, it's been there. And he knows the progression, he knows where he's going with the football. It's just continuing to be consistent, continue to get better, continue to make proper decisions, and he's growing each and every day. And I'm happy with the growth that I've seen in him. Thank you, All right, thank you guys. Thank you.